in the last class we discussed about heat capacity heat capacity at constant volume and constant pressure so heat capacity at constant volume we define it as cv and we know cv is del u by del t at constant volume okay and heat capacity at constant pressure we define it as cp cp is del h by del t at constant pressure Okay. And we talked about the relationship between CP and CV. We know and we derived CP minus CV is N times R for ideal gas, where N is the number of moles. Okay. So, for one mole, And write CP minus CV is R. Okay, so we discussed this thing in the in the last lecture. Okay, so as 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 uh, we discussed just now, so del H by del T at constant pressure gives CP. So, if we take the d t other side and if we do the integration, so and C p usually function of C p and C v both usually function of temperature. So, we will do it like that and if we put the limit, we get like so, what we get? We get H 2 minus H 1 is If C p is independent of uh, temperature or if C p is, is constant is independent of temperature or C p is constant then we can write del H that is nothing but H 2 minus H 1 is C p times del T that we are aware of. Okay. So, next we will just briefly discuss what is Kirchhoff equation okay, or Kirchhoff's law. Okay. It says the delta H So, this is Kirchhoff's law. So, derivation we are, we are not going to discuss now, you have all studied this thing, okay. where you know delta C p represents the difference of, of the heat capacities. of the individual
products and reactants at temperature T. So, also this is Kirchhoff's law. You all studied this. Okay. Now, we will move to uh, limitations of, of first law of thermodynamics. Okay. So, limitations So, there are uh, some thermodynamic phenomena which cannot be explained by first law of thermodynamics. Okay. Suppose, okay, so we have one bulb here which is filled with bromine gas and there is a stopcock there. Okay, this is initial state. If we remove the stop cock, we get what we get? We get bromine gas molecules will occupy both the bulbs. Okay, so, this is our final state. So, this is experiment 1. Consider one more experiment like this. So, you have bromine gas in one container and you have nitrogen gas in another container. And if you remove the stop cock, they will mix with each other. So, in both the bulbs, you get mixture of bromine and nitrogen. So, they will mix. So, this is initial state and this is final state. Okay. This is experiment 2 and for both these experiments delta u is 0 and delta h is 0. So, from first law of thermodynamics we get the concept of internal energy and enthalpy and for both the experiments delta u change in internal energy and delta h change in enthalpy 0 equals to 0. Okay. So, these two processes cannot be explained from first law of thermodynamics. Okay. So, what is happening here? Okay. So, if we examine or if we, if we see, if we examine the abrupt processes from a molecular point of view we see that each process involves an increase in disorder or randomness of the system. So, if we see the experiments carefully again, initially we had bromine gas here in one bulb, another bulb was uh, vacuum and if we remove the stop cock, 
this is the stop cock. If we remove the stop cock, bromine gas will spread. Okay. So, in so the randomness means the each for each bromine molecule, okay, so both the bulbs are now available to to move around. Okay. Similarly, here for bromine and nitrogen case, for experiment 2, if we remove the stop cock, the bromine gas will have access to other bulb. Okay. Similarly, for nitrogen gas molecules, they will have access to occupy the other bulb. Okay. So, randomness and disorderness increases. So, why it is important? For the processes where energy is not a prime factor, then we need to see the randomness or disorderness of the system. Okay. Now, in order to quantify to quantify or to have quantitative measurements to quantify the disorderness. randomness, we need to have, have a function or we need to have a function or a state function rather because state function has advantage over any other function because state function the property of state function depends only on the state of the system. So, so, so we need to have a state function. Okay. So, we will we'll discuss this thing uh, uh, later also okay. and actually it gives the concept of entropy. And we define entropy by S. Okay. So, entropy E is nothing but disorderness or randomness of a system. So, if you remember correctly, we have so far discussed or we have rather proved that U is a state function, or internal U or internal energy is a state function, W or work done is a path function. Okay, what about Q? Okay. So, so, heat Q is a path function. We have not proved it yet. Okay. So, today we will prove it that Q is a path function. Okay. So, Consider a reversible process ok. So, from first law of thermodynamics we know du is del q plus del w. Since the process is reversible, we just in the subscript we mention this is reversible process. Okay. So, we know du is nothing but C v times d t we already discussed. So, we can further sub simplify the equation like this okay. or we can write del q reversible we rearrange the things for ideal gas because for ideal gas for ideal gas we can write p is inert by v. 
Okay. So, we get del q reversible equals to C v times d t minus a n um, not minus um, rather plus plus n r t by v. This is the equation we have arrived so far. Now, C v times d t we can write like this okay, because this is perfect differential. rather this is d u. So, we can write like this. Okay. Now, what about the other term? So, we cannot write n r t by v d v like this, because T absolute temperature T depends on V, depends on volume V. So, we cannot do like that. So, who is troubling us? Troubling us is T. So, if we divide both side of the of, of this equation del Q reversible by T, del Q reversible equals to C V D T plus N R T by V D V. If we divide this equation by T, then our problem will solve. Okay. So, if we do it, now if you see this equation del q reversible by t equals to C v d t by t plus n r v by d v. So, each term in the right hand in the right hand side is a perfect differential, okay, which says that del q reversible by t this term is perfect differential. So, what we what we what we what we have obtained so far? We have obtained that del q reversible is not a perfect differential. which says that q is not a state function. Okay, but del q reversible by t is a perfect differential. So, del q reversible by t, this is a state function. And we know del q reversible by t is nothing but d s, okay, that we have studied. So, it, so in, in, a, in a single uh, uh, sort, we prove that q is not a state function q is a path function as well as we prove that entropy is a state function. Okay. So, we have proved that entropy is a state function. We can prove entropy is a state function in another manner. Okay. So, okay. so, entropy is a state function we will prove in different way in a PV diagram. We will prove it. We will prove it in a PV diagram. So, you consider the PV diagram like this.
So, P 1, V 1 and T 1 our initial state. So, P 1, V 1, T 1 initial state. and P 2, V 2, T 1 final our final state. So, we can we can reach from the initial state P 1, V 1, T 1 to the final to a final state P 2, V 2, T 1 through path A. If we say this is path A like this path A or we can first go to a point is P 3, V 2, T 2 and then we go from here. So, this is path B and path C. Okay. So, path A is reversible process. So, reversible isothermal expansion. So, reversible isothermal, isothermal temperature is constant here initial state in the initial state temperature was T 1 and in the final state also temperature is T 1. So, this is the process is isothermal 1 volume increases from V 1 to V 2. So, this is expansion process. What is what about path B? Path B, okay, path B is a reversible adiabatic expansion. So, the, so path B is, is, a, is, a, is, a, uh, is an adiabatic process and this is expansion process because volume again increases from V 1 to V 2. And what about path C? So, path C is so path C is nothing but reversible heating at constant volume. Okay, so, there is no volume change, but the pressure increases from P 3 to P 2. So, if you want to keep the volume constant, but if you, if you want to increase the pressure, you need to increase the temperature. Okay. So, so the, the process is reversible heating at constant volume. Okay. So, what we get so far? Okay. So, we get from this diagram and the information we have so far, we get del Q process is reversible 1 and path is B is 0 because this is adiabatic process. For adiabatic process, there is no heat change. So, since the process is adiabatic 1, so for path B there is no heat change. Okay. For path C, del W reversible is 0 because no PV work. There is no PV work, no volume change there. Okay. So, there is no volume change for path C. Okay. So, du for path C is nothing but del Q reversible of path, for path C and this is nothing but C V T D T. Right. What we need to prove? We need to prove delta S for path A. We need to prove S is state function. In order to have a state function, you need to prove that okay, the, the entropy change for path A has to be equal to 
the entropy change for path B plus entropy change for path C because entropy is a is a state function, it is not a path function. So, it is since the initial state and the final states are fixed, so entropy change for path A has to be equal to entropy change of path B plus entropy change of path C. Now, what about path A? Okay. So, for path A del Q reversible A by T is nothing but entropy change for path A. Okay. And for path A d u for path A is 0 because the process is reverse process is isothermal one and we have considered ideal gas. Okay. Since there is no temperature change for path A, so there is no internal energy change for path A. So, it gives us del Q reversible for path A is nothing but minus del W reversible for path A or plus P d V. Okay. What is P d V is A naught T by V d V for ideal gas. So, we get d s a is n r by v d v. Okay. So, if we do the integration, we get delta s a is n r l n. Okay. Final volume is v 2, initial volume is v 1. So, this is the entropy change for path A. Okay. Now, what is the entropy change for path B? For path B, delta S is 0 because there is no heat change. This is adiabatic process. Okay. What about for path C? For path C, delta S C Because if you if you go back and check it, okay. So for path C, del Q reversible equals to C V D T. Okay. Now for adiabatic process, del Q is zero. We know. Okay. So it says D U is nothing but del W reversible. If the process is reversible one. Okay, so, for reversible process. Okay, so, so, it gives us C V T D T is minus net T by D D V and it, it temperature changes from T 1 to T 2, it gives you some V 1 to V 2. So, we get C V times T 2 minus T 1 equals to N R T L N V 1 by V 2. Here we consider C V is constant. We consider C V is constant. C V does not change with temperature. C V is a constant term. Then only you can take C V out. Okay. So, what we get? What we get C V, we get C V times T 
T 2 minus T 1 equals to n at T ln V 1 by V 2. And what do we get? Uh, so, from uh, so for path C delta S, so for path C we have delta S is C V ln T 1 by T 2. So, basically here you do one thing here. Uh, so, you take T this side and ok. So, you take ok. So, you do it in another way rather. Uh, So, you write this one as C V L n T 2 by T 1. Okay. So, you take T other side and then do the indication. Okay. Now, we know that C V L n T 2 by T 1 equals to N R L n V 1 by V 2. So, this one we can we can write N R L n V 2 by V 1. Okay. So, what we get? We, we get delta S A is nothing but delta S B plus delta S C. Okay. So, this is nothing but your delta S A okay. and delta S B is 0. Okay. So, it says that S is a state function because we arrived at the final um, point P2 V2 T1 from initial point P1 V1 T1 in two different manners. One is via path A, another is a combination of path B and C, and in both cases we get same entropy change. Okay. So, it says S is a state function. Okay. So, next we will discuss, uh, we will move to second law of thermodynamics. So, there are, there are several uh, statements, but we will uh, consider once, we will discuss one statement today. Okay. This one statement is the entropy of an isolated system increases as a result of a spontaneous process. So, one statement is the entropy of, of an isolated system increases as, as a result as, as a result of a spontaneous process. Okay. So, we will consider how we will prove it. Okay. So, we will try to prove it. Okay. So, what do we consider? We consider one system big system like this okay in that container we have a wall this is rigid we consider one rigid heat conducting wall Okay, so, we consider a big container which has a which is uh, which has two compartments. We say this is compartment A and this is compartment B okay. 
and these two compartments are separated by a rigid heat conducting wall and temperature of this compartment is we say T A and volume of this compartment is V A and if we say the temperature of this compartment is T B and volume of this compartment is V B okay. and the entire system is isolated from the surroundings. Okay. So, the entire thing entire thing is isolated from surroundings. So, the entire thing is isolated from surroundings. Now, compartment A and compartment B, they are in equilibrium with themselves means compartment A is in equilibrium with itself and compartment B is in equilibrium with itself, but they are not in equilibrium with each other. Okay. So, we know when there is a temperature change then temperature changes spontaneously from or heat goes spontaneously from higher temperature to lower temperature. Okay. So, uh, and, the, and, and, this, and since these uh, two compartments are separated by rich, uh, rigid heat conducting wall, so heat can be uh, transferred from one compartment to another compartment, but uh, volume cannot be changed. Okay. So, since the whole system is isolated, so O U A plus U B is constant. Internal energy of compartment A plus internal energy of compartment B is constant okay. and V A is constant, there is no volume change and V A B is constant. Because rigid wall, we can, we, they are separated by a rigid wall. Okay. Now, what is entropy change? Okay. So, of compartment A, D is. If the process is reversible one, we can write like, like this. Okay. And entropy change for compartment B is like this. Okay. Now, since del w equals to 0, no work done. So, del q nothing but this okay. and del q reversible before compartment B is this. Okay. So, we know, so we can write D s A is D u A by T A and D s B is D u B by okay. So, total entropy change if we say D s is nothing but D s A plus D s B. So, if you substitute the value of D s A and D s B here, we get but again we know u a plus u b is constant. So, it says d u a is nothing but minus d u b. Okay, so, we get d s is 1 by T b minus 1 by T a 
times d u b. If you substitute d u a by minus d u b, we get this. Okay. So, we arrived one equation which says d s is 1 by T b minus 1 by T a times d u b. Now, we will have uh, or we can have three different cases. So, case 1 T b is greater than T a. So, the temperature of compartment B is higher than the temperature of compartment A. In that case, d u b is negative right okay so if the in that case d s is greater than 0 because if you substitute uh, if you if you for this condition t b is greater than t a and d u b is negative d s is greater than 0 so total entropy change is 0 now case 2 T b is less than T a. Okay. If the temperature of compartment B is, is lower than the temperature of compartment A, in that case D u b is greater than 0. Okay. So, we get again D s greater than 0. And case 3, is T b equals to T a and in this case D s is 0. Okay, so, what we what we observed here? We observed if there is a temperature difference between the compartments then entropy increases okay? and the whole thing is isolated from the surroundings. So, there is no contribution of the surroundings to the system. Okay, so, entropy change is positive means the process is spontaneous one. So, the heat passes through the wall from one compartment to another compartment spontaneously if there is a temperature difference between the compartments. If there is no temperature difference between the compartments, d s is 0. There is no net entropy change for this process. Okay. So, we get if we plot schematically as how entropy changes with time. So, if we plot entropy versus time, okay. so we get here spontaneous change, spontaneous increase in entropy and once it reaches equilibrium, then there is no entropy change and this is d s greater than 0. So, this is your spontaneous, this is the spontaneous process. Okay. Spontaneous process and this is equilibrium. Okay. So, at equilibrium there is no entropy change okay. of the system here because we consider isolated system. Okay, so, d s equals to 0 when system reaches equilibrium for this isolated system and d s keep on increasing till it reaches equilibrium okay. and this is this point we can say is max. Okay. So, maximum entropy okay. once it reaches maximum entropy then it reaches equilibrium.